Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the episode number 59 of the Sira Stories from the life of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. In the last episode, we studied about the main leaders of Ahzab who played prominent roles in the battle from the side of the Quraysh and the Jews. Today we will continue and study more about the Battle of Khandaq. As we learned earlier, the Quraysh were able to recruit other tribes and Jews as allies and were preparing for the next round of the battle with the Muslims. On the other side, the extraordinary efforts the companions made while digging the trenches was the most prominent proof that they were loyal to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They never left the place even when they needed to without getting the permission from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As a matter of fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala witnessed that they were believers and told us about their unique loyalty in the Quran. In Surah An-Nur, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Muslims took the activity of digging the trenches very seriously, but the hypocrites considered it unimportant. They worked lazily and they left whenever they wanted without getting permission from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They sometimes made fun of the companions who worked very hard and they also laughed in order to demoralize the believers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also tells us about this inappropriate attitude of the hypocrites in the Quran in Surah An-Nur. As a result of the tiring work, the activity of digging the trenches lasted for six days to two weeks. The trench was so wide that even the best cavalrymen would not be able to jump over except one part of it which was a very narrow pass. It was possible for a cavalryman to jump over that part and the Prophet ﷺ expressed his concern about that place by saying, I do not fear that the disbelievers can pass anywhere but this place. Moving on, the Prophet ﷺ decided to gather all the women and the children and send them to the tribe of Banu Haritha. They were a tribe from the Ansar, but they had built their own fortresses. It wasn't to the standards of the Jews, but it was the best and most protected fortress of the Ansar. The Prophet ﷺ was already thinking many steps ahead, that all of the men would be busy handling and guarding Medina, and inside Medina there was still the tribe of Banu Qurayza, and the Prophet ﷺ did not know where their true loyalties lied. As we know that the other two tribes had already been expelled, and even though the Banu Qurayza was under the pact, there was still a possibility that they would abandon the Muslims. So the Prophet ﷺ left his house in the month of Shawwal, and he divided all the Muslims in various groups to guard the trench. The houses were empty, as all the men were busy guarding the trenches, so he sent all the women and the children to Al-Fari, the fortress of the Banu Haritha. The army of Ahzab, the Quraysh and the other tribes came with 10,000 soldiers and besieged Medina. The Ahzab were greatly surprised to see the trench as it was not an Arab technique and they were not prepared for this. The siege continued for 24 days to a month. Some scholars say the total was 40 days. And the Quraysh were waiting for a moment of carelessness or sleep from the Muslims. However, the 1,500 proved to be very careful and alert during the days of the siege. The spirits of the Muslims were high. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the state of theirs in the Quran in Surah Al-Ahzab. As follows. وَلَمَّا رَأَى الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الْأَحْزَابَ قَالُوا هَذَا مَا وَعَدَنَا اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ وَصَدَقَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ وَمَا زَادَهُمْ إِلَّا إِيمَانًا وَتَسْلِيمًا And when the believers saw the confederate forces, they said, This is what Allah and his messenger had promised us, and Allah and his messenger spoke the truth, and it increased them only in faith and acceptance. 
the Messenger of Allah وسلم, decided to appoint guards to defend that narrow point during the battle. Besides, the Prophet وسلم, had entrance places built through the appropriate locations of the trench. He appointed guards under the command of Zubair bin Awam when the enemy army came and settled their headquarters. With the believers positioned defensively across the length of the trench, the cavalry of Quraysh tried to breach the perimeters. The archers, allied with the messenger, shot their arrows at the horses of the enemies, wounding them. At night, a group of sahabas had a job to patrol the trench and simply shout out Allahu Akbar just to make the people think if they got to the trench, there's a large group on the other side. Muslims were in a very risky situation. They were worried for their children from the Banu Quraiza and they would hear takbirs all night right until Fajr to deter the enemy from launching attacks in the darkness. The constant day and night vigilance of the situation made this battle the most tiring of any that the believers had experienced. The Prophet ﷺ was also at the front line. Aisha radiallahu anha narrates that one night she heard the clinking of the armor and the Prophet ﷺ was outside and he asked, Who is that? And the man said, Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas, I have come to relieve you of your duties. And so the Prophet ﷺ could rest. He was so tired and fatigued that he slept immediately. And Aisha radiallahu anha said she never forgot that favor which Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas gave to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He gave up his own sleep so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam could sleep himself. Similarly, we learn it was in the middle of the winters and the Sahabas were taking turns going into the tent to warm up and then went back outside. At this point, the final blow came and shifted the entire scenario which brought about a fear for the Sahabas. It was a shifting of the Banu Quraiza's alliance. To find out what happened next to the Muslim army, join me in the next episode of the Sira Stories. Please don't forget to press the like button and subscribe to our channel Zil Noreen. Until next time, Jazakallahu Khair and Assalamu Alaikum.